it's time for the missing piece of the puzzle, the piece that Maxwell added to the equations of electromagnetic theory that makes them complete. And we name the equations after him in his honor. We're going to need this result from your earlier physics course, and this is the electric field that's due to an infinite plane of charge. So let's consider sigma as our charge density, and we'll use the positive as the setup so that the E field points upward above. A test charge would go upward, a plus test charge, and here we go downward. And you make the Gaussian surface here so that you have something flat at the top and flat underneath, just a little bit underneath the uh, surface. And you have the charge that you're eating up is the plane of the charge section that's that area that's in the middle there. Now you can make that a can, a cylinder is fine, as long as you have a flat surface at the top, a flat surface at the bottom. This is a little distance above the plane, and this dotted one here is underneath the plane. And here, remember your normals, always point away from the inside of your enclosure and perpendicular to the surface. So here the surface is flat, so that normal points up. Electric field points up. So when I do the dot product here, I'm going to get a cosine of 0, 1, the E times A. Underneath, the normal points down away from the inside. And E is pointing down, so once again, they're lined up, E times A. And along the sides here, E is skimming this surface. And since the normal always points away from this, inside normal points here east and since the electric field would be going up or going down depending on if I'm above or below it doesn't matter it's still skimming it's still sideways here compared to the direction of the normal and that's going to be 90 degrees and it's not going to contribute so we're finished the answer is the electric field above or below the plate is sigma over 2 epsilon sub naught now we're going to use it in this configuration where we have a capacitor that's charging up, and this is the result here for reference that we just derived, and the capacitor as it charges up creates an electric field that gets greater and greater. Now here we're going to use this formula twice to figure out what the electric field is inside. We're going to use this for the positive plate, which is going to kick us to the right, and when we use it for the negative, it's going to also kick us to the right because the test charge will be really pushed to the right because it repels when you look at the plus repelling on the left and it attracts when you go to the negative to the right. So we're going to double this and if we double that that's the electric field that's on the inside. It's not a constant because the sigma is increasing as we charge up the capacitor. Now here's Maxwell's genius. Maxwell says that if you look at the Empyrean path the circular path here to get your magnetic field point P1. We did that before. You get B times 2 pi R is mu naught times I, and there's a result. Now, if you do that Empyrean path here, you don't eat up any current. So it should be zero. Uh, and Maxwell said, no, no, no. No, no, no. The uh, electric field that's changing, that flux that's increasing, that's going to do the same job. And the magnetic field here will be the same as the magnetic field there. So we're going to do that. And here we're taking this uh, as an infinite plane or a large plane. We're, we're, we're inside here and we're neglecting the ends all right, for this uh, calculation. So when we do this, we calculate for the flux. Very easy. It's E times A. Since here the area would have a normal, you know, pointing to the right. And for the uh, flux, remember, it's not an enclosed integral. It's just simply a, an area times the uh, vector when you're perpendicular to the uh, the plane. You're parallel to the normal. So that's all you have to do, E times A. It's just the, the, the flux, E times A. And here, when you take the derivative, it's going to operate on the E since the E is growing. So here, I'm just going to substitute in here, sigma over epsilon sub naught and the A, and then sigma times A is the charge. And then here, when I have the Q, the charge, the D, D, uh, or D, Q, D, T, uh, that's going to be my current. So look at that, effective current. So you can see now we get the same result here because that effective current is going to do the job that the real current 
in the wire and did earlier. The only problem is we got to get rid of epsilon sub naught. Well, that's what we're going to do. No problem. Here we have the result mu naught times i when you have the regular wire to the left and to the right of the capacitor. But here, when you're with the capacitor region, away from the capacitor region, we found that we got this. But we want to get the same u naught i, see on the right. So what we do is we kick the epsilon sub naught and we multiply by mu naught. And if we do that, we'll get what we want. So we'll then have a mu naught i here and get the same result. So let's review that again. Here, if you have a regular wire, you don't have this. You just have mu naught i. That's cool. Then when you have that gap region, look, this is an effective current divided by epsilon sub naught. Well, I need to get rid of epsilon sub naught, so that's what this does. And then I have mu naught i again. I get the same result. The same magnetic field result, whether I'm in the, away from that gap region, we're always at distance r away, or a distance r away in each case, r away. But at P1, the magnetic field would be the same as P2 because we can get the same effect with the changing flux as we do with the real current. And here this is referred to as a displacement current because when you have changing fluxes in solids or materials, you can get the um, displacement of electrons and things, charges. But what I'm going to do is redefine displacement current for our purposes and I'm going to say the displacement current is the magic displacement of currency through the gap region which is uh, my way of kind of re relating displacement current to this problem and when we add that piece in we're finished we have the Maxwell equations and their full glory and we add the Lorentz force law we have a real real nice uh, compact uh, set of equations and this will do much magic for us this will produce light a changing magnetic field will create an electric field and a changing electric field will create a magnetic field etc etc which we'll see later in our course